Coming up in today's show, linking job seekers to employers. How the Ministry of Labor and Social Security is using the internet to do just that. Also, it's Physical Activity Week and we'll show you some simple exercises to keep fit. Plus, are the tips for staying healthy and later, learn more about a potentially life-saving technique. I'm Adrian Atkinson and this is Jamaica Magazine. Stay tuned. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, April 11. Cabinet is to review a submission for the state to complete outstanding infrastructure work at the Liberty Estate Housing Development in St. Mary. Portfolio Minister Carl Samuda said the move is necessary as developer Landmark Developers Limited has not fulfilled its responsibilities under the joint venture agreement with the Ministry of Housing. In addition to an incomplete sewage system, the community lacks proper roads and the residents have complained about inadequate water supply. Having met with community members last Friday, Minister Samuda has sought and received the police's intervention to bar Landmark Developers Limited from disconnecting residents from the incomplete sewer system. The minister also committed to completing and handing over the sewer system to the National Water Commission as well as fixing the housing scheme's water tank. The Tourism Enhancement Fund, TEF, has been restructured to focus on innovation. Portfolio Minister Edmund Bartlett made the announcement during a press conference Tuesday. The changes, which take immediate effect, sees the TEF guiding the redirection of the Tourism Linkages Network and the Jamaica Centre of Tourism and Innovation. The analytical and data unit of the Jamaica Tourist Board has also been moved to the TEF. Central to your function will be one, developing innovative projects and enabling what I call iconic attractions to be developed across the island. And thirdly, within the area of projects, to see to the destination assurance by way of building out the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure. As the social infrastructure side will be done by the TPD Co. This, Minister Bartlett says, is part of Jamaica's push to remain a major competitor in the global tourism market that's driven by data and innovation. With the changes, Minister Bartlett said small and medium-sized enterprises will be better able to respond to global shocks. The minister also revealed that the restructuring will not affect the management structure of the divisions at the ministry. Still on tourism, Portfolio Minister Edmund Bartlett says anti-visitor harassment measures being implemented in resort areas are bearing fruit. This, as recent Jamaica Tourist Board visitor opinion surveys showed 60% of visitors being satisfied with their experience. The tourism minister says the anti-visitor harassment measures are enabling guests to move around more freely. The measures have also contributed to Jamaica being recently voted the number one Caribbean destination by TripAdvisor. Minister Bartlett attributes the positive outcomes to ongoing training programs, sensitization workshops, as well as heightened vigilance and patrols by resort security officers. In other news, the Ministry of Health is putting together a team of local and overseas occupational health experts to analyze data being collected at the staff clinic at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry, Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie made the disclosure at Monday's press conference in light of concerns that health workers are being exposed to noxious fumes at the facility. According to Dr. Bisesa mckenzie the team, when appointed, will assess the data to establish the common symptoms and determine the appropriate treatment. We've already made contact with a dermatologist, an ear, nose and throat specialist, and a pulmonologist who are willing to assist to look at the data and then to decide which persons would require follow-up based on that data. For persons who develop 
chronic problems, we can investigate to find out if there are chronic fungal infections, and we can investigate to find out if there are any levels of any kind of toxins that are there. But as persons move away from the building, we do expect that most of them, their symptoms will resolve. And we will continue to take that responsible approach in the interest of all stakeholders, in the interest of providing the service and the interest of those who provide the, the service. And that will be our modus operandi going forward. To date, the staff clinic has recorded 2,000 visits since the outbreak. The Ministry of Health says work to improve working conditions at the Cornwall Regional Hospital should be completed by December of this year. And finally, plans are in motion to make this year's National Mathematics Week more impactful than previous years. In an effort to take the activities outside of the corporate area, the Ministry will facilitate a mathematics roadshow in the Neville Antonia Park in Port Antonio on the 17th of April. And that will be held under the theme, Math in Your World. And so activities during that event will be designed to engage members of the general public to identify areas in their everyday life where they are using mathematics. National Mathematics Coordinator Dr. Tamika Benjamin was speaking at a recent JIS think tank. Mathematics Week 2018 is scheduled for April 15 to 20 under the theme Math Counts. The week starts with Sunday's church service at the Life Center Tabernacle Church of God of Prophecy in Spanish Town. This will be followed by an official launch on Monday at the University of the Commonwealth Caribbean's Knowledge and Innovation Lecture Theatre. On Thursday, April 19, the main event for National Mathematics Week will see over 45 exhibitions at the National Mathematics Expo at the University of the West Indies campus. The week caps on Friday, with schools and the respective regions carrying out their individual activities to emphasize the importance of mathematics. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Like when we say, when to one child do division and she said for bring down, she said for multiply, but it's a little bit hard. Yes, mathematics is a challenging subject for many of our students. And as the Ministry of Education ramps up its math improvement strategy, parents, you're being called on to join a campaign to train you in math so you can assist your children. To find out more about this pilot program, contact the National Parenting Support Commission at 967-7977 or email nationalparentingsupport at moey.gov.jm. Increasing the number of people in the workforce will definitely improve the country's productivity. Up next, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security is finding innovative ways to help persons find employment. Since 2001, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security's Labor Market Information System, LMIS, has provided a cost-effective way for employers to source and find suitable employees, as well as for job seekers to find employment. The LMIS has three components, the Labor Market Intelligence, LMI, the Skills Bank, and the Electronic Labor Exchange, ELE. These three components are interwoven to equip job seekers and employers to meet the demand of the labor market. The Labor Market Intelligence Department, LMI, collects labor market information and uses this information to determine trends and factors which influence the market. The department spearheaded the National Labor Market Survey 2017, which was tabled in Parliament by Honorable Minister Shahini Robinson. The survey identified six key findings. One, less than 1% 1 of the workers in the participating firms were foreigners. Two, 80% of firms found it difficult to fill vacancies in their organizations. Three, most firms were optimistic about their business prospects. Four, the hotel and restaurant services had the greatest opportunity for growth in the labor market. Five, demand will be greatest for skills workers in production and services with 72%. And six, 10% of the firms 
employed persons with disabilities. The survey is beneficial to policymakers, curriculum developers, students, job seekers and employers who can use the information to assess imbalances in the labour market. Labour market intelligence is also utilised to better position the LMIS to meet the needs of clients. The Electronic Labour Exchange ELE is the core component of the LMIS. It's a critical tool for linking job seekers with employers where the in-office services are enhanced by an online portal. Persons can go and register on or offline. They can create their resume um, and post their qualifications. And we match those skill set with jobs that are already posted by employers. What we do is to do preparatory work in terms of getting individuals ready for the world of work. And these are done through our employability skill sessions. And these are done effectively to allow for the individual person to be ready to go into an organization and display the relevant soft skills that we want in order to have productivity. It showed me that it doesn't matter what happened in the office or what is going to happen where you go. There's always help and strength there. You should just take the good from it and leave the bad where it is. Without the program, I would not have never gotten that training. Since its launch, the LMIS website has attracted more than 14,000 job seekers and over 1,000 employers, earning their trust and becoming a national employment portal. We have been partnering with the Ministry of Labour to have interns coming in and joining our team for three month periods. What they have been able to do is to come in and to create a steady pipeline for us of talent that we have been able to infuse into the workspace and to be able to fill our entry level roles. The experience has been a good one for us. We've been able to find talent that we can transition into the organization and most of them are still with us and doing very well. I am very grateful for the program. When I left high school, I was in and out of jobs and thanks to the ELE program, I'm here at the COK Sodality. I've been to three departments thus far, and I must say, it has been a very good experience. The LMIS is committed to serving Jamaica's labor force and has been building sustainable partnerships to enrich and increase access to the service. The latest of which has been through the new Employment Opportunities Project, which, is the, which the executing body is youth. And what that does is to allow for our individuals who are conducting our employability skill sessions to be trained in global standards as to how to do it. It also facilitates a development of a mobile app that would allow for individuals to be able to access our web portal. In seeking to cement the public-private partnership, we have signed a um, memorandum of understanding with the Jamaica Library Service with the Manchester Chamber of Commerce and we intend to do that island-wide. Through this MOU, job seekers are able to use both facilities to access the services of the ELE portal, effectively allowing the LMIS increased penetration across the island. To improve human capital and labor market outcomes for the poor, the Ministry has partnered with the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, to develop and implement an on-the-job pilot for 1,500 PATH program beneficiaries. Through the Electronic Labor Exchange, we are targeting persons from these households between the ages of 17 to 25 for job placement. Now, before we place them in jobs, we want them to be able to function effectively in the labor market. We want them to be able to retain those jobs. And it is through retaining those jobs that we will truly break the intergenerational cycle of poverty. The LMIS is grooming and empowering Jamaicans to achieve their fullest potential by utilizing labor market information, promoting the services of the ELE, and strengthening labor market opportunities through partnerships. The labor market information system providing easier access to employment opportunities. Informing, educating, entertaining. That's what we do. Keep watching Jamaica Magazine.
Did you know regular physical activity controls your weight, reduces your risk of cardiovascular diseases, reduces your risk for type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome, reduces your risk of some cancers, strengthens your bones and muscles, and increases your chance of living longer? Get active, get fit, stay healthy. When you're young, you don't tend to think about your health as much. Not true. That's not a good idea, though. If you don't take care of yourself now, your body won't take care of you in the future. Watch now for tips for forming long-lasting healthy habits. Move it! I like to move it, move it! Just like how you want to invest, right? In the future, you, you save your money because you want to buy a house, you want to buy a car, whatever it is that you want to do, you invest your money. That's the same way you have to invest in your health now so that later on, you'll be able to see the rewards. So what makes up an investment in a healthy future? A balanced diet, regular exercise, and staying away from harmful drugs are some elements. A balanced diet helps prevent conditions such as obesity and reduces the risk of heart disease and other illnesses. A lot of emphasis on fruits and veggies. You guys know your fresh fruits, your apples, oranges, bananas, your vegetables, string beans, carrots, callaloo. You want to have a variety. I always think of colors. Colors are a good guide if you know nothing about nutrition. Whole grain and high fiber. The whole wheat bread is good, your whole wheat pasta, but I really want us to make our diet predominantly our ground food, breadfruit, yam, sweet potato, green banana, plantain. Also, our oily fish, such as sardines or salmon or tuna or mackerel. Those those are fantastic for our omega-3. Lean meats, that's our chicken, fish, pork. Our dairy, soy milk, regular cow's milk, either which one you want to get your calcium, especially for the growing bones. Also, we want to reduce our sugars, that's mostly seen in our fruit juices or sodas. Once you've established what a balanced diet looks like, it's important to use the right portions. Half your bowl of vegetables. Look at the callaloo there and a quarter of your protein, that's your two eggs, and another quarter of your starch, that's your green banana. Or you can go down the bottom and nothing is wrong with having a little bit of healthy fat. Healthy fat is your avocado pear. Very, very, very good for you. It will help clear your arteries. You should be exercising three to four times per week just to maintain. If you want to improve your fitness level, you want to be an athlete, you need to be exercising at least four to five times per week consistently, all right, in order to maintain your health. A regular 30-minute exercise regime does not necessarily mean going to the gym. With just a chair, you can do a lot. Warm-up exercises, upper and lower body strengthening, abdominals, Imagine you're hearing the words of why you're walkless. You're a fool. You come like you're walkless, poop, all of these different things. How are you going to feel about yourself? You're going to feel bad. So, what most persons do know is use drugs to feel better about themselves. But the sad truth about this is that the drug do not solve the problem. Smoking of cigarettes, one commonly used drug, is a contributor to several disorders and cancers. 92% of all oral cancer is caused from smoking tobacco. 82% of all lung cancer is caused from smoking tobacco. Yes, 80 plus chemicals inside of it contribute to gum disease. That's why the teeth change color or they drop out. Hookah, also known as water pipe tobacco, is no less dangerous. An hour long smoking session is equal to inhaling smoke from 100 to 200 cigarettes. When it comes to smoking marijuana or ganja, its effect on a teenager is different from an adult smoker. In addition to smoke causing damage to the lungs, it impacts the brain. Your brain is not yet fully developed. Where the box is, that part of the brain controls the executive function of the body. We in risk, consequent, thinking, all of this. How much you know have a friend right now and they must smoke weed? And like they can't reason properly. It's like your friend a change. How much person knows somebody know why I smoke weed and it's like they get ignorant easy. 
Research shows that frequent smoking of ganja from the teenage years into adulthood leads to a significant decline in IQ levels. The dangers of smoking ganja are heightened when unknowingly combined with other ingredients. Most of you get your weed from your friend, them, right? You don't know where your friend them or the, the, or the shop or anybody or the dealer will give you. Because if somebody wants to mash up your life, all of them have to put a lizard tail in it and it's done. Or they mix it with cocaine and it's done. So you don't know where you are smoke. So that's why I said every time you smoke, it's like a gambler risk. Then there is graba, a deadly mix of ganja with tobacco and sometimes with other ingredients. When it comes to the red herring grabber and the red rose, that's what they call it, hot grabber, because those are the ones with chemicals. How they make the red herring grabber is simple this way. Grabber is tobacco leaf. So what they do is mix the tobacco leaf with the red herring fish. They wrap it up or they dip the tobacco in the water and let it dry. So when you're smoking that now, you're smoking chemicals from fish, tobacco and ganja. So, maintain a healthy diet, exercise regularly and stay away from drugs. These should help you reap healthy rewards later in life. If you need help in maintaining a healthy lifestyle, contact the National Council on Drug Abuse at 926-9002-4 or the Jamaica Cancer Society at 927-4265. More young persons will be engaged this year under the Housing Opportunity Production and Employment HOPE program. HOPE interns will be deployed to various ministries, agencies and departments to gain valuable work experience and a training in areas such as vector control, hospitality, digitization and documentation. If you're between the ages of 18 and 24, not in school or working, and not enrolled in any other training program, if you're interested in signing up for the program, then visit the Heart Trust NTA website at heart-nta.org for more information. The Housing Opportunity Production and Employment Program, giving hope to Jamaica's youth. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, available online. JIS is everywhere. What would you do if someone you know collapses and stops breathing? It is not a situation that any of us want to happen, but if it does, it's best to be armed with a technique highlighted in this next feature. Oscar! 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 Though this is a dramatization, it has happened quite often. In the field, at home or at work, a loved one collapses and is unresponsive. What follows? usually chaos, confusion, heartache, instead of immediately providing that critical resuscitation technique which may prevent death. CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. It is a skill that is an emergency skill that is used to re revive someone whose heart has stopped beating. Cardiac arrest can happen to anyone at any time. In the event that happens, you need to know the skills that you need to perform to revive these persons or give these persons a chance of survival. We never know when we can be really in a situation where we need to help someone else. It's really just a little bit of your time and I think it would be a worthwhile investment in learning these skills so we can render assistance. Even when someone is choking, the techniques learned in CPR may be applied to save that person from asphyxiation. To release the person's airway, position yourself behind them and clasp your fist at the navel and roll in an upward motion. When someone is unresponsive, that's a whole other ball game. The person may become unresponsive for several reasons. For instance, they could have a medical condition. To really know if someone is unresponsive and in need of CPR? Tap the person's shoulder and shout, Sir, 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 or ma'am, are you okay? Once the person is not responding to you, and they can respond in several forms, they can answer by moaning, they can groan, they can open their eyes, they can move a limb. If the person is not responding to you, now you need to scan the chest and look if you see breathing. Once the person is not breathing, their terms has been 
unresponsive. So once you have somebody collapsing, the first thing you need to do is check your environment, ensure that your environment is safe for you. Once the environment is safe, now you need to assess the person who has collapsed. Once someone is unresponsive, has no signs of life, call for help and bear the person's chest. So you remove their upper garment. Find your hand position, it's on the lower half, center of the chest, lower half of the breastbone, and you push in 30 times at the Bee Gees song that's staying alive. Ha, 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 staying alive. If you are trained after 30 compressions, you can give two breaths. If you are not trained, you don't know about CPR, you give hands only CPR. So, hands only CPR is where you compress the chest. You need to continue that on the way to the hospital so you're maintaining cells life. It's possible for anyone and everyone to learn CPR. Nannies, construction workers, um, teachers, lawyers, doctors, everyone should learn CPR. Once you're able-bodied, you can learn CPR. In terms of age, it's said as young as 12 years old can learn the art to save a life. So many times, you know, children get in situations that they need assistance. In fact, um, a cousin of mine, her son was, um, got into some distress. She realized that he wasn't breathing one day and she was able to help him by giving him CPR. So um, I think that was really important that she had those skills so that she could assist her son because who knows what would have happened if she wasn't able to give him that immediate assistance. This course, you know, I've done it before and I find it very in interested because I work a lot with children and one time I have to do a CPR on a little boy because it was leave under my care and the mother wasn't around and he was eating some plum and playing on like plum seed stabbing his throat and I just hear him coughing but it never it never very severe because he was coughing so when he was coughing you know, I hold him up and I you know to do a little I understand the CPR I tell him to cough and he cough and cough until it he actually come up. I had a patient once and while I was there in the bathroom with that person the person just um, fell unconscious and I was there didn't know exactly what to do but I was there saying saying sir are you okay? Are you okay? And I didn't know much, you know, what to do, but I decided to put the person on the side and I was there trying to stop the person, you know. Then I just, then, you know, I was saying to myself, I knew if I had known CPR well enough, I could perform it. The Heart Foundation of Jamaica is one of the several local organizations that offer training in CPR. The Heart Foundation of Jamaica is an authorized training center for the American Heart Association. We offer CPR training for medical and non-medical persons. We have our scheduled in-house training and organization can call us to schedule classes at their convenience. That's all we have for you on the show today. If you learned something new, share it with someone. We love to hear from you, so send us an email or visit our social media pages and drop us a line. Watch this and other editions of Jamaica Magazine by visiting our website or YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.